Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com and I thought I'd show you a quick peek at the Oberheim OBSX that I'm working on. The OBSX came out after the OBX and was billed as kind of a preset OBX, but it's, it's more a, a preset OBXA and uh, it has very limited controls here on the panel so you can't create your own patches. Uh, you can just select from the presets that are there and you have a few controls to uh, affect the sound of those presets. And inside, um, what I've done is I've uh, rebuilt the power supply. So the original uh, power supply had never been recapped and it had uh, wimpy bridge rectifiers and someone had spilled something on it at some point. So I've rebuilt the power supply by changing the uh, trimmers, the capacitors, the bridge rectifiers. And uh, since the spill affected the cable, from the power supply to the voice motherboard. I'm going to change that cable as well and uh, gave this board a, a wash so it looks a lot cleaner than it did before. The processor board is up here and uh, there's no battery because there's no nothing to save. You can't save your own patches. Um, but it looks fairly similar to the OBXA. Uh, the pot boards are a lot smaller because there's very little to uh, to change. Um, I changed the dip switch selections here. Uh, this lets you disable some of the voice cards. This particular OBSX had five voice cards and one of them was disabled via the dip switches because it sounded bad. All of the voice cards sounded inconsistent so um, they were out of calibration and I'm going to be doing a voice card service on them but one of them had been uh, turned off because uh, it sounded really, really bad. And I, I did shoot some video of that before I took them out. So you can hear there's definitely something, something up with that one, and, and rather than fixing it, uh, I guess it's just been disabled. So I've changed a whole pile of parts here on the five voice cards using my kit that you can get at synthchaser.com, the voice card rebuild kit. And I've changed uh, some trimmers that usually go bad, but that you can't really uh, adjust with enough precision with a single turn trimmer that was there to get a proper calibration on the keyboard. So I've changed the initial pulse width or sorry, the pulse width trimmer for both oscillators and the initial frequency trimmer for both both oscillators and then I've changed all the electrolytic capacitors on these voice cards. So the OBSX uh, Oberheim claimed it was a lightweight version of the OBX but that's not not entirely true. The OBX voice card was built entirely or almost entirely of discrete um, transistors and, and ICs rather than these Curtis chips that are all over this card. Um, this is more like the OBXA voice card. In fact, if you look at them, they're, they're nearly identical. The difference is uh, on the OBSX, there's only one filter chip, so there's only a two-pole filter, whereas on the OBXA, they added another Curtis chip to support a four-pole filter. The OBX only had a two-pole filter, so that's probably why they said it was like the OBX. Finally, one thing that I've yet to do uh, is, is take care of the key bed. We have some keys sticking up, and the key bed sounds absolutely terrible. And then when I was testing it out, the bus bar is so dirty that the notes were double triggering and stuff like that. So we're going to clean up the bus bar, we're going to change the bushings and level the key bed. And uh, then we should be good to put these voice boards back in, uh, calibrate it, and I'll show you the finished product. This is the grossest part of keyboard repair. That's the uh, key bed and changing the bushings and leveling the keys and stuff like that. Look at all the pet hair and dust and stuff that's in there. My hands are always filthy after I'm done working on this. And the key that was sticking up, you can see it was missing a bushing. And then some of these bushings, I mean, I don't know what this blue, slimy looking stuff is, but it's pretty darn gross. So we're going to uh, remove the old bushings, clean up this junk, uh, clean the keys, 
get everything all nice and clean and and fresh. Here's the key bed now that I'm finished with it. All the keys are level, the new bushings are in. I cleaned the keys and I actually cleaned the bottom of the key bed which was loaded with grime. Uh, I cleaned up the bus bar, see how it's nice and shiny now. And I also had to clean each individual key contact because they were tarnished as well. And now it's, uh, it's as smooth as butter. So uh, I'm ready to put this back in and calibrate the voice cards. Before putting the voice cards back, I took a look at the headers and I can see that there's corrosion on some of the pins. You can see it here on, on this pin and there are several others uh, that are corroded. So we're going to clean those up before we reinstall the voice cards. Here's some more really noticeable ones for this second voice card, the one that was having the problems. So I put everything back together and I haven't calibrated the voice cards or, or anything yet, but I can tell we're still having a problem with this voice card too, which was disabled when I got the synth. So here's a, a listen to the different voices. That voice card too sounds like there's really something wrong with it. So let's have a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the Curtis chips. We'll start here on the oscillators. So this is voice one, uh, voice one square wave output. So you can see we have a nice stable uh, square wave there. And uh, on oscillator two, we have the same thing, nice stable square wave. Let's take a look at voice card number two. And you can see that that square wave, or that wave is uh, the duty cycles changing on it. So we are not, we're not getting a uh, constant pitch out of our oscillator. And we take a look at the oscillator two on voice two, it's the same thing. These, these oscillators aren't, aren't stable. So let's take a look at, at why. Uh, the first thing that I would check would be the keyboard control voltage coming in. comes in here on connector C, the first pin here. And I'll make it a little bigger. You can see we have kind of a, a sawtooth wave coming in as our keyboard control voltage. On the other voice cards, this is nice and stable. So it looks like the problem's actually not with the voice card but with the input to the voice card. And I have a feeling um, if we were to swap this voice card with one in a different position, the problem would stay in this slot because the, the incorrect keyboard control voltage is being supplied here to the, uh, to the voice card. So let's, let's try it out and just rule out this voice card as having this problem. Okay, now let's have a listen. And sure enough, the problem has stayed here in slot number two, even though we took the voice card out and moved it over here. Uh, and we took a working voice card and put it in its place. So the problem is not with any of the voice cards, but with the keyboard control voltage coming in to this voice card number two. So we'll have to look into that. Using my little op amp tester that I built, I pulled out the quad op amp that buffers the keyboard control voltages for this uh, for this voice card and I'm running it here and it looks like one of the four op amps is bad so uh, we'll replace that and see if that takes care of our bad keyboard control voltage and what do you know it fixed the problem so control voltage for voice card one control voice uh, voltage for voice card two so no more sawtooth wave there. Uh, it was a bad op amp. So now I can go through and calibrate the power supply, the DAC, and the voice cards, and then uh, we'll wrap this up. So now that I've completed a full calibration of the keyboard, I can go ahead and hit auto-tune, and you'll see it cycle through the voices there, and then it just goes back to the program I was on. Uh, previously, uh, voices would fail auto-tune, and that's indicated by the uh, program number corresponding to that voice card flashing a red light. So now auto-tune is successful and the voices sound pretty consistent from voice card to voice card. So you'll watch the red 
gate LED light up. So uh, it's in tune and calibrated. When I was in here, I had to change these two trimmers on the processor board. Um, they control the offset for the transpose up and down switch. Uh, I wasn't getting a stable offset there uh, when I was transposing from octave to octave. So I cleaned the switch and then it still wouldn't calibrate with, with any stability. So I replaced these two trimmers. And now this keyboard has pretty much the sound of the OBXA. <laughs> So I hope you guys found this to be an interesting peek inside the Oberheim OBSX. Uh, the parts that I use for this restoration, the power supply kit, the voice card rebuild kit, and the replacement cables are available on my website, synthchaser.com. So it looks like this will do it for 2017. Thank you all for watching this year, and be sure to subscribe to my channel, Synth Chaser, to, uh, so you don't miss out on any of the exciting new videos that I have coming in 2018. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.